What keeps me going are the amazing and in remarkable women that I get to work with. So I'll give you two examples. So one is, you know, when I was doing the rape as a war crime reporting in Kosovo as a Human Rights Watch researcher, I was traveling all around Kosovo and literally trying to find women who had been raped by Serbian paramilitaries. And I found one woman. This woman had been gang raped by Serbian paramilitaries when she was pregnant. And she managed to get away and by the time I interviewed her, she had had her baby, and we were both sitting on a concrete floor in an apartment building that had been stripped. And I interviewed her for hours, and she held the baby that had been born after this brutal, brutal series of rapes. She held the baby during the entire interview. Years later, I found out indirectly that she had gone to The Hague and had testified against Milosevic, which is pretty amazing. That's just remarkable. I mean, the resilience of these survivors to go to another country and testify in an unfamiliar court against the head of state of the country that is responsible for the abuses. From my perspective, even the success of having his indictment amended to include rape as a war crime and rape as a crime against humanity, again, command responsibility for those things, was a, a huge testament to the power of these women's decision to tell the truth, right? These women's decision to, to actually speak about what had happened to them. So similarly, now when I'm in the United States working with trafficking survivors and one of them goes on the stand and testifies, it's so moving. I mean, some of them come off the stand, it's like they're two feet taller because they've told someone in authority, they've told a judge, the judge has listened and someone in authority has actually acknowledged what has happened to them. One of the most moving experiences I've ever had in court here in the United States was at the end of a case in Virginia where the judge, having heard testimony from a victim who had been raped for four months in a household, held in forced labor, the judge turned to the survivor and her husband at the end, and he didn't quite apologize, right? That wouldn't have been appropriate. But what he said was, what has happened to you is something that should never happen to any person, right? That is so healing. That is such an amazing moment. And so I think the reason that I can go on is because of the resilience of these women, and sometimes men, but the resilience of these individuals who have the courage to fight back and to, to demand accountability.